Kyle Bass. J. Kyle Bass is an American investor and founder of Conservation Equity Management, a Texas-based private equity firm focused on environmental sustainability. He is also the founder and principal of Heyman Capital Management LP, a Dallas-based hedge fund on global events. In 2008, Bass successfully predicted and effectively bet against the U.S. subprime mortgage crisis by purchasing credit default swaps on subprime securities, which, in turn, increased in value when the real estate bubble burst. The drug patent challenge campaign fizzled after several legal setbacks. Bass was the recipient of the 2019 Foreign Policy Association Medal for his responsible internationalism. Bass is a life member of the Council on Foreign Relations. He is also a founding member of the Committee on the Present Danger to China. Furthermore, Bass also serves on the Texas Department of Public Safety Foundation Board of Directors. Bass is on the Board of Trustees of the Texas Wildlife Association Foundation TWAF. On June 14, 2020, the Wall Street Journal reported that Bass is facing regulatory scrutiny from SEC investigators for potential market manipulation, an issue that appears to stem from a controversial trade executed in late May 2015 in which Bass then built a short position against the stock price of a publicly traded rate known as UDF, then accused the rate of being a Ponzi scheme. The rate executives were convicted and sentenced to a combined 20 years in federal prison. Early Life and Education Bass was born in Miami, Florida, where his father managed the Fontaine at Blow Hotel. His father later moved the family to Dallas, Texas, where he managed the Dallas Convention and Visitors Bureau. Bass attended Texas Christian University on an academic and division a diving scholarship and was a member of the Kappa Sigma fraternity at the university from 1989 to 1991. In 1992, he graduated with honours, earning a BB in finance with a concentration in real estate. Bass worked as a stockbroker in the Dallas office of Bear Stearns in the 1990s. He identified stocks that appeared to be overvalued or fraudulent from East German shippers to Texas mortgage lenders. Once he had enough to launch his fund, he started making bets against subprime mortgage. Career Before finding Heyman Capital Management in 2005, Bass briefly worked at Prudential Securities from 1992 to 1994 before joining Bear Stearns in 1994. At best end, he rose through the ranks rapidly, becoming a senior managing director at the age of 28 among the youngest in the firm's history to carry such a title. In 2001, he joined Lake Mason, signing a five-year deal to form the firm's first institutional equity office in Texas. There, he advised hedge funds and other institutional clients on special situation investment strategies. In December 2005, when Leg Mason sold the portion of the business where he worked, Bass left Leg Mason and started Heyman Capital Management to serve as the investment manager to a global special situations hedge fund that he planned to launch. Bass launched Heyman Capital Management LP with $33 million in assets under management, $5 million he had saved on his own and the balance he had raised from outside investors. In 2007, Bass testified as an expert witness before the U.S. House Financial Services Subcommittee on Capital Markets and Government-Sponsored Enterprises. During his testimony, he addressed I, the role of credit rating agencies in the structured finance market and Roman II policy measures that could be taken to minimise inherent conflicts of interest between rating agencies and issuers. In 2010, Bass testified before the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission. During his testimony, he addresses analysis of the factors that caused the crisis. From August 2010 to May 2019, Bass was a member of the board of directors of the University of Texas slash Texas and M investment management company Timco, an endowment fund for Texas public universities. Fund performance. The flagship fund had a successful year in 2007 and gained 212% based on the subprime mortgage meltdown bet that brought fame to Bass. The fund also gained 16% in 2012 based on Greek debt bets. The long-term performance of Heyman Capital's flagship fund is described by the New York Post as small calibre. From 2008 to mid-minus 2015, the flagship fund experienced a modest annualised performance of 1.56%. Apart from predicting the highs in Boston 2007, Carl called Greece's economic woes and the devaluation of the Japanese yen a few years later. Bass is known for making the winning bet on the subprime mortgage crisis. He later profited from the call that the Japanese yen would fall with a projected round of monetary stimulus by the Bank of Japan. Bass' first Asia-focused fund was the Japan Macro Opportunities Fund. This fund returned capital to investors after the Japanese yen depreciated 40% from 2012 to 2015. In 2016, he had a knockout with Heyman Capital's massive fund, finishing the year with an estimated net performance of 24.83%. Since Heyman's inception in 2006, the fund has returned 436.75% and an annualised return of 16.7%. 
Between 2006 and the start of 2017, Payment delivered an annual return of 16.5% over 11 years. By contrast, the stock market returned 9.4% a year during the same period. According to investors, his hedge fund has averaged after fee returns of 25% a year since 2006. He earned a return of more than 500% short in the subprime mortgage market in 2007 and profited from a wager against Greek bonds. Base has also predicted Greece's economic woes and the devaluation of the Japanese in. Base called 2015 one of his fund's worst years. By early 2019, Heyman had $423.06 million in discretionary assets under management, down from $2.03 billion at the end of 2014. Subprime Mortgages Base first began formulating a subprime strategy after he met with an investment banker from New York while attending a wedding in Spain. They discussed how and why the subprime mezzanine CDO business existed. After returning to the US, Base hired several private investigators to determine the ease of obtaining a mortgage. They spent a significant amount of time studying the residential mortgage market and performed research to identify which residential mortgage-backed securities or MBS composed of low-quality mortgages were most likely to default. This investment thesis was expressed by purchasing credit default swaps against the securitizations he deemed to be most unstable, which essentially was a manner of shorting the bonds using synthetic instruments. After purchasing the positions for his flagship fund in 2006, Base raised additional capital for a special fund dedicated exclusively to capitalising on the opportunity that existed in the marketplace. Base managed or advised over $4 billion of positions in subprime RMBS. In December 2007, after a wave of foreclosures had swept across the US, Base was featured on Blue Mac TV as making a fortune betting against these subprime securities. By forecasting the mortgage market crash, he parlayed $110 million into $700 million alongside his two subprime credit strategies funds. Europe and Japanese debt doomsday After the subprime debt crisis occurred, Bayes decided that it was the symptom of a more significant problem with debt and made predictions about debt doomsday in Europe and Japan. In 2009, he warned about the possibility of defaults by major countries over the next three years. As of 2010, 10-15% of his portfolio was involved in bets against European and Japanese sovereign debts. He went as far as predicting that 2012 would be a doomsday year for Europe and spoke of a looming breakup of the Eurozone, which, he declared, would lead to defaults in Japan and the United States. He stated in June 2012, Europe goes first, then Japan and finally the United States. Since 2012, Base has also predicted a full-blown crisis in Japan describing its approach to financing debt as a Ponzi scheme similar to Bernie Madoff's investments come. Though many experts have disagreed with his analysis. Renmaren Inc., a Chinese company headquartered in the KON district, Beijing, China, invested $80 million in Heyman's Japan Macro Opportunities Offshore Partners, Thalpi, a Cayman Islands exempted limited partnership between November 2011 and January 2014. Remeron reported that it received capital distributions of $84 million and $69.01 million in the years in the December 31, 2014 and 2015, respectively, and disposed of the investment on August 24, 2015. Remeron's investment in Base Japan Fund was meant to be beneficial that it represented the overwhelming majority of the public company's profits for the two-year period and therefore had to be disclosed to the SEC as material profits. The Chinese company's investment in Heyman's Japan Macro Opportunities Offshore Partners, LP, required Bremen to include the Japan Macro Opportunities Master Fund, LP, audited financials with its Form 20F filed with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. The Chinese company included the financials of Heyman's Japan Macro Offshore Partner, LP, as Renan can exercise significant influence but not control. Kellen Roch criticised BASE's Japan analysis in August 2010, noting that BASE comparing Japan to the EU was an error since the monetary systems are wildly different. Roch stated, People still fail to understand that a nation with monetary sovereignty that is the supplier of currency in a floating exchange rate system never has a problem funding itself. In May 2012, Business Insider agreed, faulting BASE's analysis since debt-to-GDP ratios do not reflect the interest rate or credit risk of a nation. The Business Insider noted that in a nation that borrowed was its own currency, public spending finance is borrowing. However, Bayes reported in his 2016 investor letter that the Japan Macro Opportunities Fund performed well, stating our first Asia-focused fund, the Japan Macro Opportunities Fund, successfully returned capital to investors after the Japanese yen had depreciated approximately 40% from 2012 in minus 2015. Bayes has been vocal about future calamities stemming from financial meltdown in public appearances. September 14, 2011, Base maintained on CNBC that Greece's only way out of its debt mess was a restructuring. 
Lewis noted that despite the strife it would bring to Greece, it was the only measure the nation could take. He added that within a year, all of Europe would be in default as well. In a speech reported on January 1, 2014, he assured the audience of his confidence that the next few years would be rife with turmoil, including the eruption of major wars. In his speech, he claimed that with the growing death and inability to pay it off, eventually social unrest will lead to violent outbreaks. Bass finished his speech by stating, War is coming just as it has throughout history. GM In April 2014, Bass was among the few defenders of GM for failing to address a defect tied to 13 deaths. He said GM is taking the right steps to invest properly in the crisis. Heyman, at the time, owned 8 million shares of GM, making it Heyman's single biggest holding. Coming to the defence of GM, Bayer said on CNBC that of the 13 passengers who had died owing to the defect, 12 either went wearing their seatbelts or were under the influence of alcohol. Chinese banking collapse Starting in July 2015, Bayer made a multi-year bet against the Chinese yuan based on a predicted banking collapse in China. Bayer closed out his position against the Chinese currency in early 2019 when the predicted devaluation of the currency did not occur. Bayes argued in 2015 that the Chinese banking system was undercapitalized and its foreign reserves would be insufficient in a crisis. Bayes predicted a hard landing for the Chinese economy following a bank crisis and a severe devaluation of the Chinese currency, variously given as somewhere between 15% minus 20% and 30-40%. to 40%. Heyman suffered its worst year in 2017 with a loss of 19% due to the strengthening of the Chinese yuan. Base thinks any trade deal with China must include enforcement mechanisms against intellectual property theft for the US to benefit from it truly. He argued that China signed a special memorandum of understanding in 2013 that companies don't have to do audits or be Dodd-Frank compliant. He is against banning or delisting Chinese companies, but he does support them having to meet the same regulations as US companies. While serving on the board of Utimco in 2018, Bayes helped create a set of guidelines compelling its external managers to divest from companies with ties to entities sanctioned by the United States. Argentina The BBC has described Bayes as having a good relationship with Argentina's President Cristina Fernández de Kirchner. In February 2014, Bayes said that Argentinian bonds represented a profitable opportunity and called Argentina an interesting nation for investments. He and other groups of investors sued BNY Mellon for failure in distributing interest on Argentine debt. The RB Times noted that the country had cheated creditors seven times since it gained independence from Spain in 1816, most recently defaulting on its debt in 1989. When the Argentine government defaulted on its debt in July 2014, Bay supported the move and criticised the bondholders, notably Elliott Management and Aurelius Capital, that, with the support of US Federal Judge Thomas Grace, had held out for full payment. Echoing Argentine President Cristina Fernández de Kirchner, he called these creditors vultures, said that they were holding up 42 million people from progress and were holding Argentina for ransom. On August 27, 2014, Bayes accused Elliot Paul Singer of holding poor countries as hostages, prompting the New York Post to comment in an editorial the next day that Bayes had sounded more like Argentina's leftist economy minister Axel Kislov than a US hedge fund manager. Based Dallas based fund Heyman Capital Management LP bought Argentina's international bond at 55 cents on the dollar after prices dropped on concern the country would default. They said the bonds have since rallied to 73 cents today in a Bloomberg television interview with Stephanie Rowe. Drug Patent Challenge Campaign Bayes has attempted to profit from filing and publicising patent challenges against dubious patents held by big pharmaceutical companies while also betting against their shares. In 2014, Renren Inc., a Chinese company headquartered in the Kaohsiung district of Beijing, China invested $30 million in Bayes Pharmaceutical Strategy through Heyman Creed's Offshore Fund, LP registered as a Cayman Islands Exempted Limited Partnership and claiming Heyman Offshore Management as its general partner. Brennan reported Haim and Creed's offshore fund, LP in its SEC filings from 2014 through April 2016 as a principal component of the company's long-term investments portfolio. Through its investment in Haim and Creed's offshore fund, LP, the Chinese company appears to have participated in base challenges of numerous U.S. drug patents reportedly aimed at driving down the price of U.S. drug company stocks. In its Forum 20F, filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission for a fiscal year, which ended December 31, 2016, Renman Inc. report, in December 2014, the company invested $30,000 in Hayman, which is a Cayman Islands Exempted Limited Partnership, and served as a limited partner. The company recognised its share of loss of $322 and $157 for the years ended December 31, 2015 and 2016, respectively. From February to April 2016, the company withdrew all of its investment in Hayman and received total proceeds of $20. 
after two years of setbacks in his effort, Base by 2017 ended his patent challenges. In 2015, Base organised the Coalition for Affordable Drugs CFAD to challenge patent validity through the entire parts review IBR process. When he initiated this practice in January 2015, he claimed that his motive was to encourage competition in the manufacture of pharmaceuticals and thus bring down prices. Base filed a total of 35 patent challenges in collaboration with Eric Spangenberg. The latter has been called the world's most notorious patent troll, including 33 filed by CFAT and 2 filed by Base personally on a not-for-profit basis. Base and Spangenberg state the coalition aims to bring down drug prices that are kept artificially high through dubious patents. In June 2015, Sal received permission from the US Patent and Trademark Office to file a motion seeking sanctions against the CFAT for allegedly abusing the patent review process. The Wall Street Journal noted that this development was being closely watched because it raises the possibility that patent officials may put an end to Bayes' patent challenge scheme. Through counsel, Sal also told the Patent Office that CFAT had threatened to challenge its patents unless Sal met CFAT's demands. In October 2016, Base prevailed in the case with us to invalidate in the two Celgene court patents related to its cancer drugs with Limid, Permalis and Thalamid at issue. However, Celgene convinced the patent trial and appeal board to rehear the case one year later. Trump administration A pro-public story describes Base as a friend of Tommy Hicks Jr., a private investor who was a hunting buddy to Donald Trump Jr. and had further ties to the Trump administration. According to the investigative story on improper links between Hicks and the Trump administration, Hicks had obtained a meeting with base with high-level officials of an entire agency meeting at the Treasury Department to air views on China. This meeting was when Bayes held a large short position in the Chinese currency, China. On February 8, 2020, he called with the belligerent wolf warrior and editor-in-chief of the CCP-owned tabloid Global Times. He tweeted that the Chinese virus, a reference to SARS CoV-2, to rampage through the ranks of the GT and the rest of the Communist Party. Hu Zijin's editor-in-chief said he had an anti-human tendency and ordinary CCP members are ordinary citizens, fathers, husbands, wives, daughters. Base later deleted the tweet but doubled down when Hu suggested he apologise. I will not. You arrested, censured and punished only God knows what you did to him and the other seven doctors, the heroes of Wuhan. Bayes went on to say the good people of China have lost trust in the CCP, barricading people into their own homes, resting the hero doctors of Wuhan, then ordering the rank and file back to work on Monday. It looks like trust in Goth and even fear of Goth has been lost, at whose and GT has revolt. Bayes is a staunch rhetorical critic of the Chinese Communist Party CCP and its policies. Bayes, in July 2021, blasted companies in the United States that speak out against social injustices in the United States yet fail to take a strong stance on human rights violations in China. Bayes chastised Nike CEO John Donahoe in particular for remarks made during the company's results call with Wall Street analysts. It's difficult, according to Bayes, to strike a balance between keeping in President Xi Jinping's good graces economically while becoming more active on societal concerns in the United States. As U.S. corporations will not stop seeking the pot of gold that is access to China's economy, Washington policymakers must demonstrate leadership in the face of Beijing's human rights transgressions, according to BASE. Financial reports filed with the Securities Exchange Commission show that before determining the extent of the evil of the Chinese Communist Party and the failure of the Chinese banking system in 2016, he accepted investment capital and two of his investment funds from at least one technology company headquartered in China.